Today, the title of the message is, Don't Be a Puppet of Satan. Because Satan has many, many, many legions that call the word demons that follow him. But in human beings, I use the word puppet. So I'm going to suggest to you today, don't be a puppet of Satan. It's okay, Kelvin. Kelvin, God, goodness gracious. Wes, because that'll make me think about what you're doing. I don't need to do that right now, okay? Then give me the time. Thank you. Listen to me very much. I must get all of this across to you. God has given us his written word to tell us what things are going to be. Paul told us these things are written as examples so that we can know how we ought to live our life. Every time we read in the Bible, be it Old Testament, New Testament, it's given as examples for us to know. The Bible says, the wisest man said, what is today has already been, and what will be tomorrow has already been. All we got to do, folk, and hear me well, is look back to know what tomorrow is going to be. The past tells us what the future is. We can learn a tremendous amount by reading God's word because what God has done for us, he has filtered the significant things we need to remember so that we can predict tomorrow. He has given us what we need. Therefore, we have to read the Bible to know what God says is important because many things that are happening in your life are not important, but many things that God has given us says, pay attention to this so that you will know not to fall into this trap. And the tricks of Satan are known. The Bible says we can know his devices. I've taken a study of many years to understand what Satan is doing. And I'm going to reveal to you the devices of Satan. I'm going to reveal them to you. Jesus, when, when, when the scripture about him was written, John said, we have written these things down about him so that you might know the truth. And knowing the truth, you can become free. The Bible is your written map and your plan for your future. God gave it in the very first book of everything we need to know. And therein we should put our major emphasis on that first book to understand how the history of man and what's going to occur. In Genesis, the third chapter, we're going to see how God put man in the garden, how the enemy comes in, makes a puppet out of Adam and Eve, and causes us to fall. And then we'll find at the end of that chapter, we find God saying, now, here's what's going to happen throughout history. Satan will attack many and bruise the heel of many. But one coming through the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. And instead of being expelled out of a garden, we will be entered into a garden. The third chapter, because of the sake of time, explains the full history of mankind. And we learn from the first few verses, we are not to be a puppet of Satan. Here's what I need to reveal to you in Isaiah 46, the ninth verse. Here's what the Lord says. Remember the former things of old, for I am God. And there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. And what does he say God does? And this is what you got to get through your head and start reading this Bible like I've been telling you to. He says in verse 10, I declare the end from the beginning. What does the word beginning mean? Genesis. I'm declaring the end from Genesis. I'm telling you what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. That's what makes me unique, God says. I predict the future and tell you what's going to happen. And what we've got to learn to do is to recognize that God is saying that we can learn what's going to happen by looking back, not trying to foretell the future. Just look back. You'll know what God's going to do. He's the same God. He said, I'm not going to change. I want to enlighten you to your useless futility of running around trying to keep up with everything that's going on now when you need to put your time in to find out what did God say? Because what he said is going to come to pass. He said, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, 
things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand. God's going to do what he said he's going to do. And he said, I'll do all my pleasure. So when I look back and I take you back, don't reject me because I'm taking you back. I'm telling you the word of God. And I'm telling you stuff that's going to help your life if you will but listen. If you'll just hear what I've got to say. Proverbs 25, 2, God says this. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. God hides things. God intends for you to be great, but he didn't put it on the surface for you to have your greatness. He intends for you to search it out. If you had a thousand kilos of gold, do you think you'd be rich? A thousand. Well, let's see. Gold is selling now for about, let me make it an ounce. A gold is selling for around maybe $1,200 an ounce now. If you had 1,000 ounces of gold, how much money would you have? I can't calculate that fast. That's well over a million dollars, isn't it? 1,000 times 1,000 is what? 10,000? No. 1,000 times 1,000 is what? Oh. <laughs> we don't know math, do we? What's a thousand times a thousand? A million. So if we had a thousand ounces of gold, we'd have well over a million dollars. We'd have a whole lot more than a million dollars. But you don't find that gold just walking down the street, do you? Where is gold found? It's in the ground. How do you get it out the ground? You got to mine it. You got to dig it out. How do you get oil, y'all? You got to drill for the oil. You got to get it. See, God has hidden his precious things in his Bible, and the only way you're going to get the wisdom of that Bible out is you got to dig it out. you got to drill in God's word. God's not going to tell you I'll make you rich and a millionaire and put the million dollars right out there in front of you. you got to work for it by the sweat of your brow and by the same thing. You've got to do this with the word of God. If you really, truly want some reality of success, I ain't talking about this blissful stuff, everything all right. I'm talking about some real substance to it. And this is what he said. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but it's the glory of kings. You become a king when you search it out. You become a king when you start searching out God's word. And God, in light, I'm encouraging you and letting you know that you are well on the way to doing that. But I want to see greatness more out of every one of you all. But I'm going to show you these tricks of Satan, how he's made a puppet out of you, causing you to be a fool, little things that he does. In fact, I've ordered it in this way to show you how Satan has done things. And I have a title that the Lord gave me on this, on Satan's tactics, something to get your attention. And I call them the damned deeds. That Satan's got something up for you. And I don't want you to fall for the damned deeds. Now what are they? Satan starts off to cook your behind by damning you with distractions from the word of God. You heard these things. I presented them two weeks for you. And they're all deeds. They are damned deeds. I'm telling you, if we'll put them up there, talk about the first one. The first thing Satan does is he distracts you. He does that. He will damn you with distraction. Get you focused on the wrong damned thing. Get you focused on a distraction, and that ain't nothing but a damn distraction. You running after something, that ain't the real thing you need to be running after. Some of y'all working nine to five trying to make a whole lot of money. That ain't the way you're going to make money. That's a damn distraction. No, I need, I, I'm going to wake you up and get you to understand because you will never forget this message. I'll show you something. When you get mad and Satan making a fool out of you, you get mad with a, I'm going to take Nina right here. Let me show you what Satan can do. When I call puppets of Satan, here's what Satan can do. Satan manipulate her to get this. She going to be like a puppet. She going to do whatever he say, and she going to do stuff that going to vex me. Now watch, I'm going to show you a distraction. She act a fool on me. And Satan is puppeting her 
making her act up as a fool. Now, she acting as the fool, okay? Why is she acting like a fool? Because he puppeting her. Mm -hmm. Now, is she the one that's my problem or him? He, she that's is right. the damn distraction right. from him. All right. If you really want to stop her from messing with you, you got to learn to cut her strings. All right. Yeah. And if you cut her strings, she can't be puppeted no yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. But what he does is he get her acting up, then you look at her, and you're looking at her, and then he gets your emotion and gets you acting up, That's and two, right. both of y'all are two damned puppets. All right. All damned right. by distraction. That's right. Because you're not focusing on who you're real in. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So why are we fighting one another? Because yeah. yeah. it's yeah. a damn distraction with other folk. That ain't your problem. That's right. You're right. But if I get more explicit, another D is you are too damn dumb to realize it. And you keep fighting an individual when that individual ain't your problem. It's the one puppeting that individual. Now, I'm just trying to make it plain for you to see that the reason you, and, and, and the end result of what he did with Adam and Eve was damnation. So I'm using the scripture to get you to understand. They got damned when they got called out of, when they were hurled out of the garden. They had heaven, but following the damn deeds. Okay. What's the next one we had? That they were distracted. Then there was deception. They were deceived. You got it. So I don't have to spend a lot of time, but I'm giving you a way to remember these words. You going to remember this. You be out telling everybody else. I'm probably on Facebook Live now. <laughs> it's all right. Because I said it, I'm not taking it back. Because I'm trying to get somebody to have some education up in here. To actually understand, you are a puppet of Satan. And he intends to distract you, to deceive you, to bring you into doubt. And then getting you, come on, give me, come on, get, give me doubt up there so they can see that one. Drink my water when it's coming up there. Mm-hmm. Then he gets you from doubt, he gets you into discontent. Because then you know when you, 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 you use that word damned in front of each one of those. You use them, can you use the word all the time? And then you get in denial. And when you're in denial, you're damning God's word. Then the next thing after denial comes dishonor. You dishonor God. Now at this point, you're going to dishonor God. Now you know you're on the way to being damned. And then when you're disobedient, the wages of sin is what? Yeah. Death. Another D. Pay attention to these things. Now, Satan uses you in order to cause these things to happen to you. What I want to do in working on my time so I can make sure I got it, I was going to give you the history of Satan. But what I'm not going to skip that over. I did that on the first service. I went further because... Trying to be a musician today messed me up. So what I'm going to do is show you how Satan's tactics are of distraction. Let's look at, first of all, Genesis 3, 1. And we're going to follow this through for a moment. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field with the Lord, the Lord God had made. Who had made this beast? Who? Okay, I need two words in that because, see, it's the Lord God. That's what the Bible says. Now, so the Lord God had made this beast, and this beast was actually allowing himself to be puppeted by Satan, and that Satan was able to speak to him, and he said to the woman, has God indeed said? Now, you see the first distraction. Who made this serpent? The Lord God. And the serpent, who spoke, wait a minute, who spoke to Adam and Eve, tell them not to eat of the tree? Who told them not to eat of the tree? 
Okay, now you said God, but it wasn't God who told him not to eat of the tree. It was the Lord God. And what Satan does is distracts from the honor that is due God as Lord God. In the very first phrase, he said, has God said. He took the word Lord out so that she wouldn't know he was talking, he was talking about the Lord God and give God the honor that was due him. He was starting with his distraction. I don't want you to focus on Lord God. I want you to focus on God. All right. I don't want you to focus on Jesus Christ. I want you to focus on God. That's the problem with the world today. They're not recognizing Jesus Christ. They are recognizing God. There's a difference between God and Jesus. You need to get this. See, that's how the devil is still working today. And you challenged me. And I'm telling you, the devil ain't changed his tactics. He doesn't mind how many gods you worship. Just don't use the name Jesus. Just don't use the name Lord God. I don't care. I say God. And what he said, has God indeed said? He's distracting her away from that. And he said, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden. Now watch what she says. Now watch her fall puppet to him. She says in verse 2, she says, the Lord does say, and the woman said, we may eat from the trees of the garden. But, verse 3, of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, he got her. All right, all he right. got her right there. Hooked her. She didn't say Lord God. Lord God is the loving God, the God that loves us. But God is just an impersonal God. Some of you all got impersonal gods. You don't have a loving God. You got God. And the only reason you go to him is when you need something. All right, all right. And that's what he did to her, caused her to get impersonal with God. And he says, you shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it. And she's adding words. And Satan says a bunch of other things. Don't have time to go through that right now. You can read it. Go to verse 6 and find out what happens in verse 6. Here's what I got to teach you now. Verse 6, so when the woman saw the tree was good for food, let me tell you how Satan appeals to you. Saw that it was good for food. He made that trick be in there. First thing Satan's going to do for you is attack you to try to get your body caught up in it. All right, that's right. If he can get your body, he's going to move from the outside in. He appealed to her flesh. He appealed to her body. First thing you'll see when he goes after Jesus, and when Jesus was tempted, he goes after his body. Turn these stones to, to bread. He goes after a fleshly nature. Yeah. Stuff is nothing wrong with the body to do, but he perverts it. He goes after the body. He goes after perversion of the use of the body. The body wasn't made to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but he says it is good for food. The next thing he does, and pleasant to the eyes, that's going after her soul, her mind, her will, her intellect, her way of thinking. How do you think, woman? This is what I need to get to you next. He goes after her thinking. It's pleasant. Well, it's, it's pleasant to the, the, the eyes. That means that's an emotion. That's how he gets most of us. Get us emotionally caught up. When you're emotional, folks, y'all don't think. When you get emotional, when you're mad, you haul off and do stuff because you're mad. You're being puppeted. He puppets you with your body. He puppets you with stuff for your body. He puppets you with your emotions. If you get caught in emotions, you ain't thinking no more. And when your body starts lead, leading you, you ain't thinking no more. Once when the time when kings go off the war, David was walking on top of the roof of his house, and he looked back over there and saw a naked woman bathing. Satan got him with his eyes, and he got him, got his body and his mind. At that point, David was no longer thinking anymore because the woman had attracted him with her body. And David said, Dang, who that woman? And they said, Isn't that Bathsheba the wife? <laughs> of Uriah the Hittite. <laughs> David didn't care no more because now his body and his mind were engaged. Yeah. Satan had him when he saw the naked body out there, but David also saw in his mind other stuff he could do with that naked body. And as a result, now he became Satan's puppet. Right. And every one of us have become puppets of Satan by our bodies and our minds. Our bodies get us doing stuff that we don't need to be doing. 
And then our minds get us thinking on stuff. And when we get our body and our mind in gear, then we start damning our spirit because I don't mind waiting. I'll get this now. I don't mind waiting on for what's happening in heaven. In other words, I need this right here and now. I want what I want. And then she took and noticed that she saw the tree was desirable for making one wise. And that's appealing to the spirit. That's the natural thing. Now, let me, as I digressed on that for a moment, I want to bring some stuff. He distracts us by focusing on the body. That's the first attack. He's coming at every one of you all. Satan comes at you by getting you to think about your body. Alcohol. How many of you just need a little drink every now and then just to relax? I mean, just a little something to kind of ease your nerves a little bit. That's your body talking. Satan trying to puppet you with that. Or maybe it's drugs. And drugs, some of you caught up on drugs because it make your body feel good. Stuff that make your body feel good can get your butt in fire. Cigarettes. Smoking stuff you don't need to be smoking. And then what about your body as far as sex? Your body on sex will kill you. I mean, sex is kind of stuff that, you know, your body go after, and you go after a little sex here, a little sex there, and then after a while, because that distraction of your body can bring to death another D to your life. Wind up caught up with something. Where did this come from? You don't even know where it came from because you've been dipping and dabbing so many different places. Uh, uh, look, I, I know I'm being direct. I know we have some visitors in the house. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but what, I, what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to do is to wake you up, to cause you to understand that Satan appeals to our flesh. Now, I'm going to tell you how to get out of these things. Three things, the body, the soul, and going after your spirit, I'm going to tell you how to defeat him on each one of those in a minute. But i got to get you to recognize that don't you see the way he's come at you? He's always come at you by coming, first of all, with the body. Or eat the soul, your mind, and what you want to do with your mind. Heaven, you know, on TV, on TV, has anybody ever seen the Korean Airlines commercial? Okay, you, you know, you've seen it. You see him coming out. They have these Korean girls. They got these short skirts. Fly Korean. <laughs> how many have seen that commercial? Right? Now, now notice how many of you all have seen it now. You didn't know it was Korean because all you saw was them women coming out. <laughs> it, caught your, it was a distraction. It's a bunch of distractions out there that are geared to make you, oh, I got to have that. What is it you got to have? I don't know, but I got to have whatever it is. <laughs> it's an appeal to the flesh, and the devil does it all the time. That's how they sell stuff. That's how the devil does. They are puppets of Satan, and you get caught up in being a puppet of Satan when you start going for it and don't realize he is conniving. He is tricking you in order to damn you. You've got to open your eyes to this, folks. You've got to begin to see. The very thing he did in the beginning, he still does. And then he distracts you by getting you to focus on the soul, pleasant to the eyes. That's your mind, your will, and emotions. Your emotions, when he plays on your emotions. How many folk have you cussed out and then felt like, I shouldn't have cussed them out? Come on, stop acting like y'all got it all together. You, how many of you ever said something you wish you'd never said when you got mad? Now, see, I had, I had to make it seem like it's okay. It's still sin. Now, get this thing about it. You say stuff. Why? Because your emotions, you are puppeted by Satan. I've said stuff myself. I have been a puppet of Satan. There are times Satan will pull my string, and he'll pull your string. He's pulled your string and my string many different times, and because we've been ignorant of it, we've just been doing, going around. But I intend to awaken you to being puppeted. I've got scriptures just lined up. We're about on 26 pages of data right now, stuff I've written down, and I'm only giving you one page. 
but I've got a lot to show you. I don't play when it comes down to teaching you. But you need to understand if you'll listen to what I'm trying to give you up front and follow me. Just trust me just for a few sermons. You'll see what I'm talking about is true. And what it is, he gets you to focus on things of your mind. Maybe it's education. Maybe it's education to go to school. You put all your time trying to go to school. That's a distraction from learning the word of God. You put all your time in trying to get an associate's degree, trying to get a certain degree. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to get a job. Don't you know it's college folk out here ain't got a job. Unless the Lord opened the door for you, you're not going to have nothing that's going to work for you. You got to have him on your side and Satan will distract you from getting right with God. Satan will distract you from serving in the church. He'll distract you from doing a lot of things. Remember, all those damn deeds we got down there. And then he'll distract us. Well, let me put it this way. Put, it, put up the way, yeah, you got it. Distracting us by getting us to focus on physical and ignoring our spiritual identity. He gets you to the point that you don't pay any attention to who you are in Christ. You got to go out here, here in your mind, I got to do this because I ain't going to be able to get this. Oh, I'm going to have to do this, I'm going to have to do this. Causing me not to realize who I really am in Christ Jesus. People, you've been called to excel. You are a royal priest of the holy nation. Why are you thinking you got the slave like everybody else? You are a child of God. You can go into the throne room of God, and you can say to Almighty God, whatever your requests are, present your requests to God. You don't know who you are. You've got the world and the devil puppeting you, making you think you like everybody else. You are not like everybody else. You are a child of the king. Tell, him, tell somebody out there, don't be no puppet. <laughs> well, if, okay, since we got visitors, don't be a puppet. Take the double negative out of there. Okay, don't be a puppet. Don't be Satan's puppet. Don't be a puppet of Satan because he does these things. Now, on, 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 the, on the distraction, what he does there of the physical, he wants you to ignore who your spiritual identity is. And he gets you focusing on things of the world. All right? Quickly, how do we overcome the physical? When the physical, that is, of the body. I'm going to tell you a simple thing. He's going to use these same tricks. Now, I got a better message that was in the first service on this. But how do you overcome the attack on your body? Don't negotiate. Don't communicate. Don't discuss anything on the body. Don't discuss it. The Bible says one thing, run. Run. If you see something you ain't supposed to have and it make your body and your toes curl, run. Because you can't handle it. Now you laughing at me, but I'm telling you scripture. Do you remember when Joseph got in that house with Potiphar's wife? That woman was coming on to him? There was no way he was going to sit up and logically explain to her how this was against God. He had to do one thing. He had to run. The Bible says flee immorality. You got to understand, I'll give you more details later on, what you got to do whenever something starts appealing to your flesh, get away from it. Because you cannot fight that thing. I don't care how big a man or how big a woman you think you are. That little play on the flesh was how Satan got in to Eve. That's the key to your breaking down because he will get you. What did Paul say? Can a man hold hot coals to his chest? It's like certain attractions of the flesh are like burning. What it does, it begins to burn on the inside. Ultimately, it just gets in. It's going to get in. Right. You cannot deal with the flesh. You, and I will explain that more. I'm just telling you, take it from me, run. Second thing, the appeals to the soul, that attack that comes to your soul, which is coming to your mind, your will, and your intellect, how do you fight off that attack? No, we don't run from this one. What we do is we study. We study God's word because it's God's words that's necessary in order for us to counteract the wisdom of the world. 
It is the wisdom of the world against the wisdom of the word. Satan is puppeting you in order to get you to focus on the world. And when he's attacking, trying to get your mind, your will, and your intellect, you've got to say no because Christ has given me the ability to study the word of God. The word of God will displace all of the thoughts of the world. The reason so many people are screwed up today is because they don't look out for the word of God. Today, protesters are protesting, just protesting. What are we doing? We're protesting what? we agitating. Why are we agitating? We just don't like this. We don't like that. They'll never be satisfied. Those protests will never amount to anything, y'all. Yes. Unless the Lord builds a house, they did labor, labor in vain. Martin Luther King, Reverend Abernathy, Reverend Shuttlesworth, they never had a protest without beginning with prayer. Amen. Unless the Lord is on your side, all this foolishness, it's just stupidity. A few weeks ago, there was a protest that was held at the airport. Talking about, we're going to be a sanctuary city. Protests went down before City Hall. You know what they did to y'all? They did a trick on y'all. Because they said, we're going to pass a resolution. Say, we're going to love one another. We're going to treat everybody right. They didn't do a dadgum thing. And folk walked out City Hall. We won! You didn't win nothing. <laughs> they gave you a distraction. It didn't change not one thing about this city because this city cannot be changed in City Hall. All right. And they went to the wrong place. I don't understand. Uh -huh. If you're going to do something, at least do it right. That's right. But folk caught up on emotion. Oh, we're going to do this. And they're just being puppeted. Okay. Go check it out. Okay, I got all these legal folk in here, right? Do we have home rule, bro? Are you in Birmingham? You're in Birmingham, aren't you? Do we have home rule? Home rule. No, no, in the city of Birmingham. Who makes the decision for what's going on? Anybody else? James, you're in here, right? Do we have home rule that our city council can make a law and change something without the state going with it? Say, who has to do it? So when we passed that resolution a few weeks ago, did it mean anything? Well, you, you, you're a representative for okay. But you know the bottom line, did it change anything? No, it didn't change anything. But it made them people happen. They walked out, didn't they? Well, you can't say much, but I'm going to tell you. You all have to understand. And you know what I felt about it? I was upset. I was upset because I knew it calmed down the audience, but I said, these folk don't even realize they didn't do nothing. And I felt like I was supposed to take up their cause. And I, but I've learned, I mean, with my sister in here, uh, uh, that say, do I have to take up everything? Well, Shante, she in here? She, she, see, and that's one I didn't pick up, Shante. I let them go. I know only what God, only what God tell me to do. But nevertheless, I got to finish this up. So the thing is, you got to know the truth. Jesus said, when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. When the devil's attacking you in, in, in your mind, your will, your emotions, you got to know the word of God to overwhelm your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's how you overcome that attack. Then when he attacks you in the spirit, there's a simple thing you need to do. When he attacks you trying to break down who God is and that God ain't this and you need to look at what's going on in your life right now. Don't worry about tomorrow. You do a simple thing. You worship. All right. You worship God. When you learn how to run away from immorality, when you study the word of God, and then you worship God for who he is, Satan can't put his hands on you. I assure you, if he can get your body, he can get the rest of you. He'll work from the outside, from your body, to get into your soul, and then to get into your spirit. That's what he will do. Which is, by the way, when we go in the tabernacle, remember? We work from the outside in. But Jesus works from the inside out. I've got so much to show you, but my time is over with right now. We'll have to continue this next week, okay? I am so sorry. I'm trying to be a musician.